This is the second in our series of six talks uh, that we've called Foundational Roots, about uh, being built together to grow a dwelling for the Holy Spirit. And last week in the first talk, uh, which you can find online if you haven't yet seen it, uh, we recognised how important it is to resolve our purpose in all aspects of life. That once we manage to tie down a purpose, um, then we can discover what we may need to do to achieve it. And we're given purposes by God, and, and we're going to explore those uh, today and over the next four weeks. But to achieve the purposes, the other thing we will recognise as we go through is the Holy Spirit is going to be essential, absolutely essential, if we're ever to know what we might need to do in any of our own unique situations. And so over this series, um, we'll look at five significant purposes of a church and consider just how crucial the Holy Spirit is. Um, and then how we can put them into practice in our community is something that we can resolve for ourselves uh, in each of our situations, as our churches and our lives are uniquely different from everyone else's. And as disciples, as churches, one of our purposes, uh, it comes really from the great commandment of loving our neighbour, is the purpose of fellowship. Fellowship enabled by the Holy Spirit. So what is fellowship? Well, I think I can honestly say that it's easier to define what it isn't than what it is. I think we know when fellowship isn't there. It, we know it isn't about disunity and arguments and infighting and gossip and secrecy and you know, being inhospitable towards others or not being generous towards someone in need. We, we know that we don't want to be like that. Maybe the origin of the word, the, the fellowship, this combined word that we have, a fellow. Well, what's a fellow? Well, it's a companion, isn't it? It's a comrade. It's someone that we would share life with. So fellowship is something much closer than maybe we've considered. It's definitely not just having a cup of coffee after service. Um, in some churches that would even be referred to. And so now let's have fellowship. That's definitely not what Paul or God would intend uh, for us to take from this. So St. Paul writes uh, in all his letters in different aspects, but in Romans 12, he says something about uh, the closeness of this fellowship. In Romans 12, 5, he says this, So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the other. We form a body. This is Paul's analogy of the church as the body of Christ. As, as Jesus left this world and went back to heaven and sent his Holy Spirit, that the church is formed by the Holy Spirit to be as the body of Jesus on this earth until that day when we meet him face to face. And he says here that though we're many, we form one body. So it's, it, there's something about us all being together uh, awfully difficult to form a body if we're not together in some fashion. So there's something of fellowship that's about gathering, uh, not just on a Sunday morning, but in, in some of the things that we will do within our communities. And each member belongs to all the others. Now this one's a bit tougher. So Paul uses the body analogy in the same way as, as we would. You know, the body is made up of an arm and a head and legs and feet and all the bits in between. And you could imagine each of us is one of those different parts. And one of the phrases I would regularly use in this context is if, if the foot doesn't turn up, well, we're going to limp. We need each other and we belong to each other. The arm can't say that, well, I'm going to go off somewhere. It belongs to the body. Which is, this is quite tough, really, because it says that, well, I belong to you. By the way, it also means that you belong to me. As the global body of the church, as the local body of the church, whatever it is, we belong to each other. That's a much stronger bond than friendship, isn't it? And then he says this in verse 10, he says, be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. So again, this is something about others, not ourselves. And it's, and the bond is created in love. Be devoted to one another in love. And that's a very easy thing to say, isn't it? 
and it's a remarkably difficult thing to do unless we can understand something of love, be devoted to one another in love. You know, we can't maintain fellowship on our own. And as we look at the purposes, as we go through these, these weeks, we're gonna discover each time around that we can't do it on our own. And that's why our verse for the year from Ephesians 2.22 connects all of the things we're looking at over these six weeks. In him, you are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. In Jesus, as Christians, we're being formed to become a, a place where the Holy Spirit can dwell. It's not instant, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time to be built together. But the Holy Spirit is promised to us. And some of the verses from John's uh, reading that we had earlier from 1 John 4, are going to help us in that and I've chosen three verses out of it here so verse 7 13 and 16. In verse 7 John writes dear friends let us love one another for love comes from God everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. I've always had this image of John the disciple by now when he's writing these letters he's quite aged uh, but he was a young man when Jesus was around John who ran to the tomb and beat Peter there. He was younger. Peter couldn't get there quite so fast. But now John's had decades of pondering. And John's first letter is fascinating in that he can't get away from the topic of love. He, it folds through everything that he writes. And here, dear friends, let us love one another. This depth of friendship that's fellowship for love comes from God it has its origin in God we we we're discovering that aren't we that actually we can't do this stuff on our own it has to come from God via the spirit but there's a lovely reassurance here that everyone who loves has been born of God and knows him and in verse 13 this is how we know that we live in him and he in us he's given us of his spirit so not only if we find that we're loving others, do we know that we know God, but also we know its origin. We know it's come to us via the Holy Spirit. And then the last, I couldn't leave this out. It's from verse 16 of 1 John 4. God is love. Three simple little words that have a depth of theology that will take weeks to fully unpack if someone really wanted to. God is love. We think of the Trinity of three in one, a perfect unity. We can maybe think of a, a community of close friends where they look out for each other. They reflect something of the Godhead in the way that they serve each other. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them beautiful isn't it sometimes though we struggle because the word that's used so much is love and in this particular just short passage of what 12 or 13 verses from John's letter uh, John write, he writes in Greek and the Greek word used for love here is agape and he uses a version of it 29 times just in this passage alone and so it's probably going to be helpful for us just to consider this word love or its origin root agape uh, greek is fortunate it has three words for love uh, whereas we only have the one so agape i'll come to it in a second the second is filio which is a well it's like a brotherly love it's an affection it's uh, i quite like you really type word um, and eros which is is more to do with physical attraction it's the sexual side of love. But what we're looking at today is agape. Agape is always about the other person. It, it's something of serving another, of helping another, of, of being alongside another, of being a companion, of being a fellow. Agape love. 
There's something interesting also about love. We, we see it as an emotion, don't we? But agape love, well, that's different because it's a decision, it's not an emotion. We choose to love someone when it's agape love. When we know, let's take a simple thing in our home settings, when we, we think, you know, I'll offer to make a cup of tea or I'll go and empty the dishwasher. These things that we're sitting there and we see our partners and we see that they've had a busy day, actually, we could stay sitting and carrying on with what we're doing, or we could go, well, I'm gonna make them a cuppa. Now that's, it's a small version, but it's that's agape love. It's a decision, it's not an emotion. And we do it for them because we love them. It's an action. But it's not one that we can make without God's help. We know, don't we, from the letter that he's given us of his spirit, that God is love and whoever lives in love lives in God and God lives in them. We can't do this on our own. And so my prayer really is that we, we take some time today or another day to just contemplate and ask for the presence of God's spirit to help us grow in this purpose of fellowship, of, of discovering how we can love others, how we can serve others, how we can be alongside others, how we can enable others. It's always about others, fellowship. But the lovely thing is it gets reflected back. We're gonna have a song in a second, um, but I just wanna read you a little bit uh, of the lyric of the song. Show me who you are and fill me. Fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. It's, it's, the song's called Build My Life. Show me who you are and fill me. Fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. It's a lovely definition of where we're at today that we need to know who God is. We need to be filled with his spirit. We need to know his heart and we need to follow his lead so that I can love those around me. <laughs> 